on sustainability is Dr. Magnus Olofsson. He's Senior Advisor to Nordic Energy Research. Um, so please welcome Dr. Magnus Olofsson. <clears throat> Thank you, Ambassadors, officials and all. It's, I'm very happy being here in Ireland, a front runner in renewables and in, in uh, digitalization. And I will actually focus on the green transition and digitalization in the Nordic Baltics. Um, and I come from the Nordic Energy Research. That's a platform for co cooperative energy research and policy development under the Nordic Council of Ministers, as you well know, uh, as an organization. And we fund R&D to promote a sustainable future, and we contribute to policy making. And we contribute on a different level bit, bit, uh, depending on topic, because sometimes it might be sensitive. But we try to deliver some facts, and then, of course, it's up to, to the politicians to act on these facts. And one very important um, basis, I would say, is this document that we have been uh, released twice. This is Nordic Energy Technology Perspectives, uh, NETP. And the last edition was in 2016. You can find it on the web. That was made together with the International Energy Agency. So it's a thorough assessment. You can say it's an optimization on how to reach the climate goals in the most cost-effective way, given the assumptions on technologies and, and policies and everything that we have put into the model. That was do done through a, a Nordic collaboration. I mean, we, we are activating the universities and experts throughout the Nordic countries, and sometimes, sometimes also in the Nordic-Baltic context. I will come to that. So here is one of the results out, uh, out of this big study. And we can see, I don't know if you see all the details here, but if I summarize, the world CO2, it has gone up a lot since 1990 there, as you see. So we are on the wrong track, and we need to go down, and we have this two degrees target that is bending down then. But then we see the Nordic actually, the Nordics has actually gone down in, 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 in emissions. And uh, we put in, in this study, a, a, a carbon neutral scenario actually, where we reach 85% reduction. The last 15% we take on flexible um, actions in, in other countries. Uh, so, what we have done recently is that we have actually started a tracker, and maybe before I come to that, I will actually say that, um, yeah, uh, it was a, a prime minister meeting in Finland, in Helsinki, in January, and uh, actually the Nordic countries agreed to say that the aim of the Nordic country is to be carbon neutral and to demonstrate leadership in the fight against global warming. So this is a really strong statement from the Nordics together as a joint entity. And uh, we have also seen countries uh, launching targets like Sweden uh, with uh, no net release of greenhouse gases 2045. And we have seen also Finland coming with 2035. We can't really compare just now, uh, years because there might be some definition, difference in definition, but still, I can add the list with the other countries also. We have very strong ambitions in, in the climate, that's for sure, and we are actually on the, on the way there. And uh, I, I brought some, some paper printouts of this tracker that I should mention that is actually following up on the, on the, um, on the, on the carbon neutral scenario uh, launched in 2016. How do we do in these different areas to, to really come to the to the target, and I have like 20 yeah, of these here, and you can also see it, you can find it on the web also. And this is from the tracker down, so we can see that the only green one that we are really on track is the transforming of the power sector. They were really doing well. We are building a lot of wind, for example, wind power, so, and um, I mean, we are, are already very good, but close to 90% uh, cl climate, uh, a neutral uh, power in, in the Nordics, so we are already very well, but we are continuing on, the, on, on that track. The big picture is yellow then, so we would need greater efforts. And then you have some red, that boosting bioenergy, uh, decarbonization of industry, energy efficiency and smart buildings, uh, energy storage and so on. I can't go through, I, don't, I only have like 10 minutes, so I, I don't have time. But we, we can just have a look at, um, 
at the big picture here and we see really that the GDP is forecasted to continue growing a lot so it's a decoupling then and then we see that uh, we, 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 um, we, we um, forecast or we, we um, um, see that the, the emissions would, would continue reducing <coughs> towards the, this target and we are actually I would say almost on track here and um, yeah this is just showing the progress in the combined I mean power and district heat uh, sectors together and we see that the trend is going down and uh, yeah this is on track electrification we heard um, from you Eric about uh, electric vehicles and and this is really I mean Norway is, is, the, is really the front runner here and, and Sweden is also now has launched a stronger policy policy uh, uh, tools and so on so it, it's going to pick up and we are on track there for the light duty but we see some good examples this is for example an ele electrified ferry between Sweden and Denmark and there are many in Norway as well and other countries coming uh, or already in operation I would say in Norway and uh, and we also have uh, uh, actions on making highways, for example, electrified. This is one test from Sweden. It's, here's another one in Sweden where you have the power actually under the, the, the truck. And yeah, so there are various initiatives, but still it must go much faster because as we know, we have to speed up this transition. Then just a very few words about the Baltic uh, perspective also. We, we actually did a, a smaller study uh, close to this Nordic study related to that one uh, for, what we call Baltic energy technology scenarios try to kind of see what would be the optimal transition in the Baltics and that was of course done together with the Baltic countries so, I mean it was a joint effort and we adopted a model and actually we have to when you do this modeling you have to model a big area not just the Baltics you have to be so it's just showing that and, and this is the result of the op optimization. This is from electricity only. And, and there you can see, the, the, according to this optimization, it will, it will take some time to be self-sufficient. Self so it will be more based on import. And then uh, after a while, wind and solar will actually grow quite heavily. Uh, the reason for the delay is that it's uh, actually wind and solar are not, not, not that much. I mean, the natural resources are less in the Baltics than in, for example, in, in Norway with wind and Sweden also. So, so then it makes more sense to import. So, so um, this is kind of from the optimization. <clears throat> yeah, I, can, I think I skipped this one. Then I would like to just say a few words about something that is really close to my heart. That is digitalization of the, of the power system. And we're actually setting up a fairly big uh, research R&D or RDNI program, what we call NordGrid, together with transmission system operators in the Nordics, all, all of them, and um, we are getting there. Uh, and this is actually in line with Jorma Ollila, uh, his advice. He, he, got, uh, he got the task to make a, a, a thorough assessment of the energy uh, sector in the Nordics and see what, what is really needed to make, uh, I mean, the sector to, to move ahead, I mean the whole energy sector. And he has a lot of proposals and this is one that he would like to see to create the smartest energy system in the world in the Nordics. And this is really in line with that, that we would actually use more of digitalization. And I mean he was the CEO of Nokia and actually I spoke with him myself and he said that of course, I mean why shouldn't the Nordics be the lead in this? I mean we have the expertise in the digitalization and it should be, just be more adopted into the into the power sector as well. So he, he proposed an, a big uh, R&D program and now we're try, trying to materialize it. And here is uh, some rationale behind why we should do this new grid project. And it's quite obvious, I mean, all these changes with more wind, solar and interconnections, less thermal power, uh, power higher complexity, larger and faster variations as you, of course, have it here in Ireland, Ireland as well. And then, of course, we have the opportunity to use digitalization. So we don't do it the old way. You should do it the new way. Um, I don't know if I'm running out of time. This is just showing from the NETP the, the projected uh, interconnections uh, within and, and between the countries in the Nordics and also with the rest of Europe here. So it, it's quite an extensive uh, transition also in the grids. 
yeah so if I make it just very very simple I mean today for example if they're gonna call for 200 megawatts more of generation if something happens in the system they actually pick up still pick up the phone the physical phone and that's the reason it's mainly cyber security that I mean if you would make that completely digital it's too high risk you need a human in between as like yeah, otherwise it's, I mean, it's the risk for blackout. I mean, we need to keep the lights on. And, but there are many things. I, I have a list of examples here, but I don't think I have time to go through it. But, but it's, uh, it's really many, many opportunities to use digitalization in the power system for a more reliable, more cost-effective, smarter uh, power system. And the way, of course, to do this is to do it together. This is an African proverb that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together, and that's the way we work in the Nordics and Nordic Baltics, and hopefully together with Ireland as well. So thank you.